introducing our speakers for today. Firstly, we have Professor Pravin Mishra. He's the Dean of Vijay Bhumi School of Design. He is a communication designer, an award-winning film, filmmaker, and an accomplished painter. His numerous accolades include National Critics Award at the prestigious Mumbai International Film Festival 2004, <coughs> excuse me, by Government of India, and Best Documentary Film Award at Ahmedabad International Film Festival 2009. Profes Professor Mishra has been a weekly columnist with Times of India's Ahmedabad Mirror for over five years and a regular contributor to the Quint and the Print. He has designed the Casa da India, also known as the House of India Pavilion in the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre, Brazil. He is currently pursuing a PhD from National Institute of Design and has delivered a series of lectures in well-known universities such as University of Southern California and Michigan State University. Uh, very welcome, Professor Mishra. It is, it is an honor to have you here with us today. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to Ms. Gauri and Mr. Prasoon Basu. They are, the, they are production designers and founders of Offish. Being graduates from the National Institute of Design, they have been working on spatial design and art installations for narrative spaces. Their portfolio consists of a series of work done in the fields of production design for TVCs, TV and web series and films which includes film projects such as Tanaji, Manikarnika, Saira, uh, Narsimha Reddy, Panipat, Houseful 4, The Reluctant Fundamentalist, A Suitable Boy, and upcoming films uh, like Brahmastra and Prithviraj. Very welcome, Ms. Gauri and uh, Mr. Prasoon. We're very, very excited to have you here with us today. Thank you. Okay, um, lastly, but not the least, uh, not the least my, my personal favorite, Ms. Shilpa Singh. Uh, she's the leading life coach and skills trainer at Mindler. Having 22 years of experience in career guidance, life coaching, HR management, and teacher training, Shilpa Ma'am brings a holistic purview of the entire education and skill building spectrum from schools to organizations. She has a strong foundation in people management skills and holds a master's degree in psychology. Her experience ranges from schools to business sectors, passionately delivering career workshops to hundreds of students and professionals. Okay, ma'am, uh, handing over the proverbial mic over to you. Thank you so much, Kupak. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our speakers. It is wonderful to be able to be in such august company. I'm, I'm feeling quite uh, uh, awkward being able to ask the, you guys about design because it seems like, well, I should just hand it all over to you and you should just take over and be able to tell everyone anything. Um, I will, however, ask Gauri and Prasoon since everyone is really curious, do we have a release date for Brahmastri yet or not? Uh, but, <laughs> but apart from the fact that that is the reigning mystery in Bollywood, let's talk about design and figure out what's happening in the world of design. Now, um, the very little knowledge I have in comparison to our very august speakers, I do want to be able to put this forward that uh, for all the people who are attending and who are listening to this work, uh, to this webinar, please understand that without realizing it and without even thinking about it, design is everywhere in every single thing that you own and every single thing that you wear from your glasses to your clothes to your jewelry to uh, the table that you're sitting at or the laptop that you're looking at, everything is designed, right? And we've spoken about this before when I've, when I've done sessions, some of you may have attended sessions when we've done that. Um, it's an element which we don't even pay as much attention to if it's a good design. And if it's a bad design, we notice it immediately. And so good design actually, therefore, is something that is uh, very critical from that perspective. And the aim is to be able to create good design. So I hope I have at least been able to understand that element of basics there. But what I would like all of you to be able to benefit from today is two things. One, from the academic perspective, be able to understand where are the courses and what is going forward in design. And from the practical perspective, which Gauri and Prasoon will be able to help us with, will be what is the hands-on elements that are required? What is it that they learned? What is it that they wish they had learned uh, earlier that they you know, would like to be able to let you guys know on so that you guys have a heads up on that? So I'm going to start off and I think I want to be able to ask, um, 
uh, uh, let's let, let's do it backwards. I'll do the practical first, and then uh, Professor Misha, with your permission, if I could come to you second. Um, the world of design has changed, and design as such as a field has changed so much. And what I want to be able to understand from you is this in constant evolution that's taking place in, in design right now from your perspective, Gauri and Prasoon, where do you see, what do you see the new areas coming up in design being, and what are some of the new areas that we need to be starting to think about where we're not even maybe making the connections yet? So in your, in your experience, what would you say that to be? So, yeah. I think uh, at some point we have stopped thinking that what we are exactly, what whether we are designers or, you know, production designers, films, uh, animation designers, whatever. I think overall design education, what it has done, and that is how the whole scenario is moving to, it is a very enabling uh, system of education, which sensitizes you to multiple things. Once you do that, you can take on this emerging uh, trends because the trends, whatever the trend is today, five years down the line, it will all change. Like I studied something, she studied something, but we are not practicing that in uh, that sense of the term because the specializations that we have uh, pursued at NID, it only enabled us to look into one aspect of design with, a, with some focus for a few years. That actually enables you to appreciate all other forms of design and all other forms of, uh, uh, you know, skill areas, thinking areas and things like that. So yes, the focus is necessary for one particular subject, one particular aspect of design, but design being designed, which is ever evolving. Like right now, today, we do not know whether the, on different platforms, we call them, we call ourselves as designers, makers, tinkerers, all of this. And this is the spirit that I would say our education has given that open-ended education of design where you, you are kind of sensitized to look inwards and outwards. And, and that is a training that you need like three, four years, five years, you are consistently doing only that. Alongside you are picking up some skills, some tools, some softwares, which will eventually change. We all know it will change. Nothing of that is constant. But the one thing that is constant is this interdisciplinary uh, appreciation. Like how, how basically you are making your, what in neurological terms, I don't know whether I'm using the right scientific terms, but uh, the, the no, where I, the neurons new mean, new neural right? pathways are being uh, created in design that is, that is the process that design enables the most after that you have some skills some materials some you want to do something mm -hmm. so today you do something and then later on think of its application you got it so, so i was just saying that uh, it it enables what he's saying it enables you it actually makes you more daring <laughs> in a way that you are not afraid to do something let me try this and you are ready to fail also it's not like you will uh, if you have studied design you will just like become the best at what you do but i'm just saying that it you are not afraid of getting a challenge like facing one but also at this point i will say one thing which we are glad that when we studied design design that way design career didn't have that much expectation <laughs> Like an engineer is expected to earn a certain package within a certain year uh, by a certain, we did not have that package, but the, that baggage, once you, that baggage goes, then you can do whatever you feel like. Then you are pursuing, like I have got a lot of engineer friends who have studied engineering, but are not pursuing engineering. They're pursuing something else, but I cannot say that they're happily pursuing it because of that baggage that they have if you so design education or fine arts education or that kind of stuff at least i don't know the scenario now but uh, it that way it kind of and when that baggage is not there you can go out and explore like till today we have we are picking up new skills to do something new without knowing ki whether it will what it will actually fetch so when you're looking at something 
from a very childlike perspective like new thing innovation you are getting excited about it then that excitement is the first vibe that should come after that all of that market uh, scalability technology everything falls in place everything it will falls in place probably it will fall in place or probably it will not but that in, excitement nobody can take away from us in the in on the way on that journey you will meet those people who will like come and join your hand and so and that, that way that is the beauty of design education because design education doesn't you know it's not a it's not a bookish learning it's a more of an experiential journey so once you do that uh, then you that that magic of design that magic of discovery to relate something to completely two different things and then make something out of it and then put in some of your skill sets in that area the, and i'll tell you one small example just the other day something that happened which made me feel really happy about it is like for the matlab uh, it's not like before lockdown sometime it happened there was one uh, we were building something in on a circular ground okay on a circular space and we had to find the center of it so and in that process like that i had like got all this the draftsmen and carpenters and fabricators with me they were applying their head on it because you know you, it is it was impossible to go around that circle and to find you know diameter this that and all of that was impossible so suddenly class 7 standard geometry theorem came to my mind huh? and i was standing on the edge of that circle i said okay if i draw a right angle triangle a right angle triangle on this circumference which is easy to ek kila thok diya zameen pe aur udhar right angle create karna bahut aasan hai so ek rassi leke wo us taraf bhag gaya ek taraf rassi leke dusra banda dusre taraf bhag gaya it's a huge ground like 120 feet 100 220 230 feet ka ground tha dono ko bhaga diya and then i said kyunki jahan you are cutting the circumference of the ground and where you are cutting we draw a line there that is the hypotenuse of the rectangle a right angle and the center of it is the center of the ground i do not have to measure anything so the joy of applying a seventh standard geometry theorem on ground that itself is a experience i cherish till date kit when you are uh, when you are at the very alert state then you sub you are you know taking out stuff from your subconscious your life experience your everything you do not have to go back to books obviously you would also do that but the you know neural networks happen on its own when you are excited about it and once that happens you create something and then uh, something else happens and probably that will lead to some other successes somewhere else, uh, some in you know financial yeah and all of that but that is secondary the thing is that magic of it and it's so that is the experience i think design offers us every day you suddenly uh, you know bring up one experience from your childhood one dream uh, or one fantasy and suddenly you put it in your day to day work that's just you know that excitement of doing being able to do that that keeps us moving that keeps us super moving. so i'm i'm really glad you shared that story about you know the fact that Uh, and i and i like what gaurav said about the fact that you know you do you're not afraid to try something so i think what the great uh, what great an opportunity is to be able to before i have professor mishra way in his thoughts on where the where the future of design is going is what i've been able to gather from both gaurav and prasoon is one that design is uh, to a large extent and that you know driven by passion it's also driven by fearlessness it's also driven um, by an element where it's uh you are being multidisciplinary in nature i mean you are not it's not like because i'm going to be a designer i don't need to understand my maths or i don't need to understand my psychology or my english or my geography it's all going to come together and be able to find expression in design so i hope i was able to understand that correctly from you 
Perfect, great. Uh, Professor Mishra, your thoughts on where do you see the future going in term of, uh, you know, what do you see the newer, more, the newer specializations coming up from, from the academic perspective? What would you, what would that be? Uh, hi, every, hello everybody. It's, it's actually wonderful to be part of this discussion. And uh, uh, so I'll start with what uh, Prasoon and Gauri actually pointed out. So design being a very passionate field. Design is also about connecting dots. Design is about being unafraid. Now those things are going to stay. Design is multidisciplinary. So you connect one thing with another. Uh, what is going forward specifically post pandemic? A uh, lot of things, I think technology is playing a major role today and a way forward because this pandemic is not going to be the last one. As we understand, there will be lockdowns, there will be lockdowns because of pandemic, because of something else. Uh, there could be you know, global tech, uh, internet failure, there could be uh, cyber attacks, all kinds of stuff. I'm just saying there will be situations, there will be major power cuts. Uh, uh, so we have to get used to this uncertainty. And that's where I think design starts playing multiple, uh, uh, very important role. Uh, what it does is it borrows, design as a discipline borrows from uh, psychology, it borrows from literature, it uh, borrows from mathematics, uh, several, several, several other disciplines also design borrows from. Uh, what is way forward is Technology coming into this majorly. Like what is going to happen is, for example, today, uh, the communication design was understood till about say a couple of years ago, till before this pandemic, it uh, was mostly about broadcasting. You create something, then you broadcast. Right. Now, because of technology, because of the improvement in data science and artificial intelligence and machine learning, now the communication design is going towards narrow casting. So what is happening is each individual is being profiled based on their practices, daily life, the websites they visit, the amount of time they spend in doing things, even the toll plazas that they cross, you know, everything is data. You're actually touching a data point, creating a data point. Right. Now with more advancement of technology, what is going to happen is the big data will be analyzed further. So each of us will be profiled further and uh, the brands, uh, uh, in fact, the governments, uh, the, the social sectors, they're going to target individuals now. Yeah, or maybe very small groups which are very similar. So therefore the change from broadcast to narrowcast is going to be the major, the biggest ever factor in communication design specifically. In industrial design, there will be changes. In fashion design, there will be changes. But this is one drastic change in design. Also, the newer professions that's going to also emerge out of this. Uh, uh, there are there are people, there are designers who are trained to see pattern in numbers. Now, they are data visualizers. Now, there will be data storytellers. Like they see data, they spend half an hour, one hour. They have a story. And this, there's going to be huge demand for new talents. You can see number, who can see, basically is decoding the data, which is meaningful, which can be used by people, by brands, by anybody who is targeting, yeah? So what I see in short is all the other disciplines from where the design is boring, that is going to continue. Design is going to remain the same, like learning new things every day, you know, uh, having new challenges every day. Uh, there will be successes, there will be failures. Failures are also bigger successes sometimes because it leads to some other thing, yeah? Uh, but technology coming in majorly because people uh, all over the world, they have sat uh, at their, uh, uh, in their own houses, in their own offices for long hours, uh, meeting people virtually. This is the new normal that people are talking about and making sense out of this, yeah? So yeah, that's about it. 
All right, great. So there is going to be obviously that entire impact of technology that you're talking about, where, you know, the, the connect that you spoke about when it came to data visualizers or people who are seeing the patterns and the design within numbers. So for both of you, I would like to be able to ask, and of course, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Gordian Prasoon first here. How have you seen the change of technology impact, what impacting what you're doing in design, as opposed to when you were studying it, it to at a certain level of technology, but now the newer technologies that you find yourself using or needing to learn to be able to have your work happen? Um, and, and what is it that that has helped you? And uh, Professor Misha, for you, it will be, the same question as to how do you see that technology interfacing and, and how is it that you know your your institution is being able to help students get to that point of being able to be ready because i mean obviously we're evolving very quickly but uh, we want to be able to understand that so i would just like to get your two cents in on how has the technology element impacted you in terms of how that's been happening for you how has it changed majorly okay the coming i i would just uh, add one thing uh, when we were studying, we had like one phone <laughs> where we would have to run to if our parents call us or we would have to go in and stand in a line in a queue and then wait for our turn to make a STD call. And later, after two years uh, of, my, uh, of my joining NID, then we got mobile phones. Some of us got, then later on, other people got. Now, without a mobile phone, I, uh, we don't see uh, any, uh, not even like uh, seven year or eight year old kids have mobile phones of their own and so they that, are all home. That is the time. On, on so screen. drawing from that, what she's also trying to tell is around that time we were doing our design process course where our professor MP Ranjan uh, in our project was saying <clears throat> that every screen will be a uh, touch screen. Every interface will be something it will not be button and if i correctly remember praveen professor praveen mishra was one of the first ones to get a mobile phone on campus <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so but drawing from that what is happening is that person at that point of time he was saying we were drawing scenarios like uh, we were working on a design problem at an end of our foundation year that time too there was no phones. No. She's talking about a time which was two years down the line. I'm talking about end of our foundation course, the final uh, course in the foundation course uh, in the foundation is this design process in which we were drawing scenarios on paper of, you know, UI interfa user interfaces. Oh, just one second. Just didn't I'm in a meeting. Uh, can I call you back? Huh. <laughs> So at that point, we were designing on paper, on A4 sheets with our pencil key, if was, a kiosk is a solution for this, uh, what would the user interface look like? And then we were not having a keyboard on that. So that is an enabling factor for a, for a professor who said, okay, don't, don't, don't think it, the computers will look like this tomorrow. Huh. And that time he had this vision. So that what that did was it is not we were not preparing an actual ui interface for the future we were doing a project in the future sitting in the present so what happened that way but then what he talked about today but now which part of that technology and uh, of that whole scenario that really affects us and affects the advan whose advantage we are taking today is what he just said, ki narrow casting. So the narrow casting, what it helps is today you do not always have to think about a huge broad audience. If you are doing something you find it exciting and interesting, you will find your niche. You have access to that niche. The data will get those people to your page, to your Insta page yeah. and yeah. your Facebook. So that what that uh, does Today, what we are doing, we are borrowing from old technologies, new technologies. Uh, and what also one more thing, just uh, when he said key about communication design and also about uh, industrial design, the whole making part of it, like the rapid proto prototyping pipe, uh, typing part of it, what it is enabling is you are making the products at home. So the whole concept is that is also basically narrow production, I would say. 
like narrow casting it's not mass production it's narrow production it's custom made production made only for you i am doing the design and i am sending it to you you are printing it in your own 3d printer i am not even supplying you the filament i am right. not even sending i am just sending you a file and yeah. you are printing it at your end i am designing it so that way i think the uh, as a see sometimes i we also uh, get confused about what we are actually doing is this hardcore design or industrial design or production design or communication design we are just going with the flow and this is i think is the best time to be that creative individual where you can tap into so many things right huh? you do something and then suddenly it finds a new use or yeah. sometimes you see a problem you identify a problem you come up with a completely different solution and it's very easy to find a market for it a niche for it and place it at the right uh, price tag also yeah because yeah. you were because there are the middlemen who were guarding all the entry points all this while say for film it was the distributors or anybody else for that matter a channel now they would say okay your content is not working your script is not working but today it is not just film and tv shows and things like that it's content creators so you create a content which you feel about you like that concept you you believe in that concept you create a content and then people are finding that content interesting and that what is happening that the distributors are going out the yeah. middlemen are going out so now if you have that many followers for a certain content you have to just show the numbers you have already behind you so the distributor or a producer can't tell you okay this won't sell because you can already show a proof that this is selling yeah yeah people are liking this so i am saying today with narrow casting the narrow matlab uh, no we can create something on our desktop and reach our audience without moving anywhere as long as you are connected to that audience you are right. connected to that uh you know you have to be you are getting connected with all kinds of people with all kinds of uh, specializations with all kinds of interests and with all and that is how you are creating a network of communication so that is what has and because i am talking about we seldom get we 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 are in a very narrow zone okay we are just following what we are passionate about so sometimes it becomes difficult for us to comment on this very broad like pravin is talking about because he is examining design in a very very broader sense yeah uh, we are practicing design in a very narrow sense today we are liking this and we design something and then we put it out there and then move on to the next one so we don't get the time to examine the you know broader sense and come up with that but i think that is somewhere inside already within us that you connect with that there is a you, you are part of that flow that is happening you are part right. of the trend that is happening correct so i think a lot of the technology element that has also happened is i think because we have ended up having so much more access to people about what we're doing whether it's creating content or it's designing content or designing my art or if i'm designing something specific in terms of anything i mean it, now you can look at design in so many different ways large element of it is the problem solving and creativity aspect of it but a large part of it is also the fact that technology today has allowed me to access and reach the people who will use and see my design immediately rather than my having to wait for someone to get me there and that's that's one element so in terms of being able to use technology to my benefit there but professor mishra from your perspective as an institution how is it that your institution is being able to help us be able to get uh, students future ready in terms of design as a as a domain specifically uh for First of all, uh, Vijay Bhumi School of Design is part of Vijay Bhumi University. Vijay Bhumi University is India's first liberal professional university, and uh, what how we define education is very different from most of the universities how they define. Uh, there are there are many differentiators of Vijay Bhumi School of Design that actually our mission is to make continuously employable professionals. Yeah, now. what happens is uh uh consider this 
as Prasun was mentioning, while we were studying at NID, and I'm so glad that we all studied at the same time, Prasun, Gauri, me, uh, we had some fantastic teachers and the technology was changing. The computers have had just arrived. Now, uh, we were trying to understand. So now we were looking things, we're very curious, what is this new uh, uh, a, a creature which has come in? Uh, uh, Macintosh had donated a, a, a lab at National Institute of Design. Uh, all those things were happening at that moment. Having a mobile phone, so uh, 99, uh, uh, 1999 is when I got my, it's 22 years old, I never changed my number. Uh, so what happens is the way things have changed in the last 22 years, the fact that we started talking, instead of pager, we started talking without any line, without any cord was a very big thing, correct? The fact that you are moving around and then you are able to, uh, people are able to reach you and you are able to reach anybody. It was a very big deal then for talking. Five, 10 years down the line, it became a smartphone. It became touch screen. We were able to see videos, camera came into the uh, phone. And now it's so normal. Now some phones are actually capturing better images than some of the best cameras, more, most professional cameras, because the uh, kind of technology that is being used in spite of having such tiny lens is just outstanding. And they make profit here because this is mass produced. Cameras, num total number of cell is small where mobile phones are selling in large quantities. So they can actually invest a lot of uh, money in terms of technology, innovation and all. Now, what is happening is, I'm just talking about the change that has happened in these 21, 22 years is unthinkable. We can't imagine a life without mobile phone as Prasun said today. Uh, what is happening is, we are creating professionals in just four years. In four years, you do a BDS program. The professional, the, the person, the, the young graduate is about 20 years old. That person is most likely to practice design till that person is 70 years old. Now, what we are doing is we are creating professionals for 50 years, five zero. Is nobody can actually even imagine what is going to happen in 50 years how the world is going to look like, what are the technologies, how we are going to communicate, what is love going to be, what is being going to school means, going to mean in, in 20, 30 years. The only thing that one can do is change the education, make somebody uh, uh, able to find patterns in those uncertainties, somebody who can connect the dots, take things from different disciplines and make sense out of an unknown situation, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So these are the things that one can do. At Vijayabhumi School of Design, we have removed the foundation year, which is typical of any design school, which is very important, by the way. We have done something in the second year and third year, but the first year we are calling it discovery year. Okay. It's basically a student, a design school attends, uh, 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 a design student attends classes of data science, of law, of business, of music. Now we have probably India's finest, music school, true school of music on campus. So there are a lot of learning is happening together. Okay. And they are able to connect, make sense out of this. They are able to discover themselves, right? Once they discover, then we work on each individuals differently. This okay. is what Vijayabhumi School of Design has done to make future professionals who are going to be continuously employable. Wonderful. So a lot of the multidisciplinary elements being addressed in the first year to be able to help you plug into that. So I, I want to go down to uh, two questions that were coming in. First question, of course, is for you. This is a question that I've seen scroll up and down in the chat also. It's a question that as career coaches, we get asked a lot. Um, it is it is a profession in which there is, of course, that whole element of fearlessness. There's an whole element of creativity. All of that comes into the play there. But in terms of how you're looking at the pandemic world, post-pandemic, post-COVID, different elements that will happen, the viability of design as a career um, which is one of the things that most parents will look at it and say that, you know, is this something that's going to be able to be viable as a career and what are the viability? So you're just your thoughts, just very briefly your thoughts on that. Then I want to be able to move to some other points. So, uh, Professor Mishra, first, if you could share viability of design as a career, I saw it floating up and down in the chat as well, rushing past me. Uh, so if you could just share your thoughts. So Design is a profession which is not more than 102 years old. Though they were designers, but they were mostly artists. Okay. Yeah. Now, Bauhaus came. That was exactly 102 years ago, which actually defined and 
made design like industrial design architecture and communication design as different domains and defined what design is right they brought design away from art and more close to science because okay. it is all about logic it's all about solving problem and art as a tool like you know you need to be a creative mind to be able to solve a problem but that solving problem in scientific way right now now what is happening today uh, i'm sorry i just missed one part uh, mm, uh, what, what was the thing that you're asking i'm sorry i just missed viability, that was, the viability of viability yes, yes. Yeah. now 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 102 years down the line now that you know we are in a completely different situation design as a field with the kind of awareness that people have as as uh, uh, shilpa ji have had rightly mentioned right in the beginning that every bit everything that you see and use they're all part of design this is design that phone is design uh, 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 a light is a design everything that you see that is around is design there's more awareness design is also so you there's a there's a discussion on nation building and how a designer can contribute in nation building as such like it's system design right now all kind of discussions are happening the design as a field is only going to grow it's not right. just going to be viable is not not just going to stay it's some one field which is just going to grow it's probably is going to double up as a profession in terms of total uh, uh, um, turnover or the number of professionals that you have in every few years is going to double up yeah wonderful and that's something that's actually quite heartening to be able to know because you know i think um, there are there are those careers that will always be there and i think the element of fearlessness and and creativity that design brings into the picture the the need and the desire to do something new to change to make change happen is is very critical to be able to do that um so gauri and, and prasoon one thing that i want to be able to ask you now we're looking at the growth of a field it's going to continue to grow what are the skill sets that you think a great designer or a good forget great let's talk about a good designer these are the skill set a good designer should have in terms of when they're approaching either looking at the course so like i've got students asking what are the skills that students should have how can they work on that and that's something from the practical perspective if you could share with me when you started your design journeys what do you wish you had learned ahead of time or you had gotten exposed to ahead of time that you feel would have made your journey more enriching in in you know while you were studying your design so what are the some things that you think students today 9th through 12th or you know can work on that gets them prepped up and what are the things that are what do you think that there are skills that are important so before before coming to that i'll just continue from yes please a little please. bit on what pravin just said why design as a profession will only grow from right. here on right is what we were saying a little while back it's it's about those neural connections mm -hmm. design is that one field which is only making connections got it you know engineering or any other field you are going deep inside one thing yeah yeah and even they inside that also there are connections that they are making right and design is a field which is making connections between fields Perfect. so more and more Uh, technology is emerging more and more techniques emerging more and more skills emerging more and more scenarios emerging design is the only uh, uh, thing that makes connections mm -hmm. and build stories mm -hmm. and create users and create products and create services and create scenarios right so once you were trained in the art of creating what i am very glad to know actually when pravin was talking about uh, first when he said ki the foundation has been scrapped we were like ha ah, ah, why mm. and then when 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 he said ki what it has been replaced with i'm very glad that the design program of nid was founded on one report by mr charles james mm. which is called the india report right which emphasizes on this point which emphasizes on in fact nid was supposed to also have a fine arts uh, just like bauhaus it was supposed to have a theater arts and fine arts all these uh, this uh, disciplines together in one campus it is not about creating a theater artist from that school mm -hmm. it is making this connections that it is about psychology it is about technology it is about science as much as it is about uh, arts yeah and yeah. music and everything so this scientific connections abstract connections it is about sensitizing yourself 
while you are making this connection so now coming to that skill set when you come to from that perspective when i talk about like somebody said is it uh, necessary to be good at drawing mm. i would say don't see it that way yeah. i think drawing when we learn drawing i would say ki drawing helped us to observe things closely hmm hmm okay you know so that was one tool to observe things closely like you were looking at one cup for that many hours or minutes and not looking at anything so it's it's about concentrating and seeing the forms patterns how one thing is relating to the other what is the proportion of the handle to the cup to the base to the top and all of that i am saying it is and also it is about the hand eye coordination right but today a lot of technologies have you know one needs to figure out a way of learning on this so i am saying what pravin had said it is important to find your interest first mm -hmm. and any of these fields like if you go into music or arts or any matlab theater every each of this disciplines have their own set of practices of observing and relating right theek hai whether it is music you are learning to basically you are tuning your ear correct and your mind right and then when you are making connections that is important because first you were taught something then as you were learning you start making the connections mm -hmm. and that connections to a great extent happens at the subconscious you were just feeding the subconscious with one kind of data mm -hmm. and let it do the connections and when the connections come in the foreground then so basically that will also in that case i will talk about a song by lalan lalan fakir khachar bhitor achin paki kemne ache ja so uh, lalan fakir is like one like the sufi singers mm -hmm. is a uh, philosopher down uh, in east like tagore was inspired by him for his deho tatto and uh, very deep philosophical baul songs mm -hmm. so in that there is one 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 uh, particular stanza where it says थ्री the more mirrors you add the more dimension of that object you see so like say if you put a mirror of music you probably can say, say for example you see a film yeah now there is a mirror which is the music the more you are sensitized about music you start to see the what it is trying to communicate through music hmm so the basically it is about introducing mirrors and right. we have to find our mirrors it is not about you know one particular skill but anything that allows you to stare at something experience something without with like that is another problem of today's technology the problem of today's technology is attention span yeah that's true if so, you do not send those strong impulses that's the the how your pattern is forming one kind of impulses you are trying to send back to a subconscious then the subconscious comes back with a story with a concept with a new connection right. but if you are only skimming on the su surface mm. not mm. getting deep mm. so any any one thing you want to study deeply and spend like 10 12 14 13 hour, hours of your day but any one thing that in, that like, interests you is good enough to learn how to train your dragons basically once you learn how to any any one method to train your dragon is fine then otherwise they will all run here true so, so that elements basically to be able to anything that allows you to build awareness and be able to do that yes and concentrate also concentrate because Perfect. the process is that yeah the you know, process is the observation you are focusing on something For over a period of time. Correct. 
for a certain amount of time also and you were observing the growth of it you were, whether you were being able to observe this cup better each day with yeah. your uh, you know hand eye coordination and your level of concentration only then the subconscious will get awakened and then it will start making the connection so if right. you have just too many impulses then it get confused fair point fair point so a lot brilliant, of brilliant that that is a, a lot of deep observation the fact that you have to have multiple perspectives the fact that you have to have uh, as much awareness of the world around you and allow that awareness to be able to help you focus and see new things within what may be otherwise visible to you uh, those are skills so i think it for students if i could just sum that that would be building as much awareness as you can of the world around you and also learning as much about different things because that's how you form the connections but professor mishra from for vijaymoo's for vijay bhumi's perspective what is it that you are looking for in students when they are applying for a design course with you and there are a lot of courses that are available that are certificate courses and things like that that are available to those help students when they are applying for a uh, you know bachelor's of design course with vijay bhumi or uh, do they help at all for a student who wants to study and also uh, what are your prerequisites in terms of what you look for in a student a uh, stream or the, the skills or what is that that process look like uh, all what we are looking for in a candidate who can be a potential designer is a curious mind nothing else everything else we can work on yeah just a curious the skills uh, that one needs like in terms of drawing in terms of executing all those things can happen can be acquired through training okay. language skills can acquired through training like for example right. uh, uh, when i joined or uh, my contemporary joined nid in 98 many of us could not even speak uh, english in the sense that we could hardly understand english but it the space trains you when you're mm -hmm. staying in that campus and people are talking uh, the a faculty member is presenting uh, uh, a certain knowledge so you basically get used to it and lot of students i had some amount of training prior so i could draw but there many colleagues uh, we, we joined together could not draw much but they right. were able to by the time it ended right all one needs is a very curious mind mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 curious mind will lead to passion about anything that person does right. you know person can write or can draw can uh, 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 take photographs can can you know compose a music whatever passion would come if the mind is curious that's it and for us we do not go by too much of like portfolio thing uh, portfolio is good it's it's uh, in in fact portfolio is important in the mdes program if somebody wants to uh, because it needs certain amount of basic knowledge to be do masters right But at bdes level we we actually uh, don't do and uh, we do not also uh, there are there are many coaching classes and all uh, but that i personally don't think that helps much if okay. somebody wants to get some exposure before they apply uh, uh, as of now what we have is we have just 30 seats because we want to we understand the importance of massive interaction with student because design is learning by doing and and Fair that point. requires one on one attention right our batch point a batch size we have limited to 30 only and we're just looking 30 curious minds and and i think uh, we've already got most of it uh, right. so we are starting in august and uh, we hope to have 30 minds whom we work for the next 4 uh, years uh, and 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 make them socially responsible as well as continuously employable designers wonderful so just to be able to get that uh, you would look at any stream will work so for just clarity for all the students who are on here any stream you do need to be able to have the prerequisite of curiosity and the ability to be able yeah. to you know uh, be aware of the world around you from what the practical requirement is of course and observe and uh, so i just one quick question there professor mishra then are you still taking applications for students who have just finished their 12th the ones who just had their board scans yes, yes, yes. yes so the application Absolutely. forms are also still open uh so that's also yes. a great thing that you you have option there open to you as well those students who may still be wanting <laughs> to or have gotten intrigued by design today to do that um and, you have and and yes. uh, yes, uh, silpa ma'am just let me add gg uh there's something called dean scholarship so out of 30 students that we are taking 10 students will get 50% scholarship for the entire course 
Nice. Now that's that's something that we are offering because we want some really curious mind to uh, uh, to start so that we start working on them. Yeah. Perfect. So there are scholarships are still available. The some are given, some are still available. Yeah. You also have a communication design program at Vijay Bhumi, from what I saw. Could you tell me a little bit about that so students understand what that's about? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, communication design includes graphic design. Uh, animation film design and i'm so glad prasun actually right now is working on various other fields but he's one of the finest animators is award winning animation film designer uh, he also has very good sense of music he was talking about music and i know uh, how he helped many of the students compose their music uh, including rajesh chakraborty's dhak and all so uh, uh, what happens is you know that's what i think practicing multidisciplinary is very important uh communication design uh, includes filmmaking all the uh, kind of different kind of filmmaking that's documentary filmmaking to fiction filmmaking uh to like tv series uh, you can make tv commercials so that is part of uh, communication design it also includes ui ux uh, digital experience design yeah which used to be called new media 20 okay. years ago uh, <laughs> is now different now it's a design for digital experience today and uh, like you design apps you uh, design games uh, all those things are there and we have uh, given a lot of importance to technology and therefore uh, augmented reality a virtual reality uh, kind of one can actually really specialize in them and make a career out of it because the which future of technology is sorry future of entertainment is going to be very different people used to watch films in theater uh, i don't think that's the future now okay no <laughs> now we at watch the on our phone so yeah <laughs> one more thing in that is just an observation it would be i do not know right now the format is also going to change because right. that 120 minutes format was because of the theaters and the show timings yeah so right now we are already seeing a one one is because of the pandemic and other restrictions the theaters are in bad shape whether we will ever go back to the theaters we don't know whether the theaters would be just like amusement parks like once in a while you go there and most most other times you just watch it on your tv right or the phone because it is on the verge of that like right now also we are binge watching series correct so what happens in that series now i'll tell you a little difference between in in that since because we have been working on these things and it is actually very interesting like when you were doing a film it's in 120 hours you build a whole world uh, right. and you tell the story in that 120 hours and you are out of it right right now what is happening is you once you build a world people want to see more in that world the more characters in that more stories more once sub stories like, once they like the world once they want to be a so part of the world so it is not and do. most stories are open ended now yeah there are some series which are which are the users decide what happens mm. so mm. things are getting more interactive and more interesting right so the thing about but the most interesting thing part of the job there is to design that world design that uh, you know the story idea Mm -hmm. We recently did a project which is uh, on Hotstar right now, OK Computer, which mm -hmm. is a uh, futuristic twenty thirty five sort of a time. Mm -hmm. It's produced by Anand Gandhi, who also produced um, Tumbad and uh, Ship of Theseus. He's the director of Ship of Theseus. He's one of the most cutting edge filmmakers. So he is full of ideas. Like spending time with him, he's like a uh, encyclopedia yeah. mm -hmm. but how he tells his story he, he, he the story is a big satire about mm -hmm. future and technology and ethics and all of this but you know comedy format right so the thing is what and the whole world is built around that so scenarios once you build the scenarios that can produce more content more merchandise more products services all kinds so the thing is one has to visualize and create those stories and create those worlds mm -hmm. design them mm -hmm. and then everybody will come and want to live in that so it cannot be more interesting than that no so coming back to that the format 
the film once the film format changes a whole new set of formats come up shorter crisper or longer which you want to watch over uh, you know a longer period of time right so the contents the 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 technology is changing the content is changing the uh, formats are changing everything is changing this can this is the most interesting time yeah the way we are engaging with the content is changing yes yeah so yeah that's 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 brilliant so um Wow, wow, we've covered a lot of information today, and I think this has probably been one of our more esoteric kind of webinars where we've actually been able to dive deep into industry as well as be able to get that viewpoint. And I'm very thankful to to you know the three of you for sharing your experiences with us. So for the students who are on here, what you have to remember for sure is awareness, uh, curiosity, and connecting the dots, and concentration, and being able to look deeply within something. Yes, yes, Professor Mishra, please, please. uh silpa ma'am with your permission i think there was one question to gauri that if she had to change one thing go back to education change one thing what would that be i think that would be very interesting for the young people who have joined an event for me yeah. i will ask that question to gauri but uh, yeah so uh, gauri if you can throw some please, light on please, that please please yes if you could go back and change one thing in the way you learnt design or in the education process that you learnt it what would you change absolutely please please do answer that you think of it yeah i need to think a bit but um yeah i i think like what prasun said that uh, knowing how to draw uh, would have yes added a lot of um points uh, in the way how i saw things but yes since i since uh, since i know i know when i was young i used to make shapes out of anything and everything okay uh -huh. and though my mother she is a doctor and she was like i maybe one of the daughters will become a doctor she always had a hope but none of us uh, pursued that my sister is an architect urban designer and i pursued um, film film and video so and my uh, and i always had the bent of of finding shapes of making stories of making something but yes of course i thought if i would know little bit of drawing better then i could have um maybe done a little bit bit better in particular <laughs> in, in particular, this particular yeah, job in, that we are doing yes, today yes. probably that is what she is saying sometimes that becomes important but the uh, thing is because we chose a particular uh, yeah. Fair. So but now that, actually, if if but now matter. actually it doesn't matter because now if I have to make something, I build a three D three D object and show it. Right. I I, I use all three D tools. I use Fusion three sixty. I use SketchUp. I use all those three D softwares and I make something. Right. I really don't have to uh, sit and draw with a pencil. To show an idea. To show an idea. So yeah. that is I have overcome that uh, thing also now. Because so, that was the only tool. Available at that, at that time, point yeah. of time, right? To express an idea. Yes. yes. Today, right. there are so many tools available to express an idea in in its most nascent form. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Googling and also to catch an idea. Hmm. Like, also, like when I was doing my uh, when I was doing my diploma film, I I wanted a storyboard. I had to ask somebody. I made a storyboard. Thoda sa better kar do. I have made something. Just isko thoda sa acha kar do. Yeah. So, see, because that is. that is uh, uh, i thought that if i could have done it i would have maybe thought of other things also while doing it yes mm -hmm. so that so is, that is when, when, when you are putting when you are doing it yourself you acha why not acha is tarah se dekhte hain why not do this and when somebody is just executing your uh, your thought they will not put till they are actually in it they yeah, not yeah. put their brains in it okay so now i think with all these new softwares with all the new softwares i know now 3d softwares and i am very happy that yes i have learned all these so yes now if i have to do something i can just make something and show bhai i want this now this is what it is right yes so, so it's it become easier to be able to yes. put your it idea it to concept yeah so one tool to have one handy tool to express a doodle of an idea and while you are doing it the the whole practice helps you catch so many other ideas yeah the process while you are doodling it now when you are doing sometimes what happens is when you are doing a 3d and all of that it's so like in a sketch there are 
like in a 3D model, if you're doing a, you, if you have executed a cube, it will only look like a cube. Right, right. It will not appear something else and suddenly give you a different idea. Okay, maybe not cube. We maybe maybe we can make it a little spherical. Mm -hmm. So that interactions happens in those little doodles where it is, you know, that ambiguousness of it leads you to other. While making something, it becomes leads you to other things. So, maybe better I, than what you had so already like with imagined. The lump of clay. If you're playing with the playfulness, now the three D softwares and everything. Right now, technology is enabling you no, to play now with the 3D it. So that is giving you saying. that uh, something like what you get get on a lump, lump of clay, clay, clay and all that of you that can that. actually make anything out of that. So basically, right. something to visualize forms and uh, you know train your eyes with. That's that's all that is needed. But that is what she is talking about is in very narrow application in our day to day yeah. jobs today. The right. kind of projects we are doing today. Right. In right, some right. of the projects, that too. I'm not right. in everything. Like there are projects where we do not draw anything. Yeah, yeah. We no, do not if, if we are like we we have some uh, animatronic, we do animatronic uh, stuff, and uh, we did the horse for money karnika also. I'm sure everybody knows about it. So, <laughs> so, so that, uh, that horse. I did the mechanics of it. I have not learned anything. I have not learned uh, engineering. I have not. I don't know all that, but. We, we did it. it. We out. figured it. Like, okay, this will move like this. This will move like this. Okay, what will happen? Let us join it to this pivot. And, and how what will it will happen? Move? So we we did it, and I did the whole three D design. So I now I will tell you that this as, as an anywhere. experience, that as an experience, I'm saying where all the dots get connected in that one example of a horse. Mm -hmm. It is when we identified a problem as a production designers. We were on set. We are all all the time on set, and we realized that. Shooting with horses is a big thing because you know you have, if an actor has to deliver a dialogue, has to do some action, and on top of that has to control the horse. Uh, so there's the safety of the horse, then safety of other people. The camera cannot go to some places very near the horse and things right. like that. Right. And every time, if the dial, if the actor has delivered his or her dialogue properly. Executed the action. Everything is right, but the horse has overshot the mark. Mm -hmm. And your shot is so for a small little thing. You are doing so many retakes because it's a uh, unpredictable element on set. So we said, "Ki how can we address that?" So we came up with the idea of an animatronic horse, which is already there outside in US. There are one or two uh, horses there. There one guy who has actually won an Oscar for doing that. So we said, "Ki how do we do that here?" So mm -hmm. the Innovation here it is here we are applying as a maker designer. We are mm. not inventing. So we took so many ideas from the coin wala horse jo hota the bachpan ka usse leke. But I'll tell you one very interesting story. Taking this as a case study where our design learning had applied in every little bit. So there was this project in which uh, we had to give this horse uh, a big project from Yashraj Unli. Uh, but at that point of time, we refused to sell them. They wanted to buy our horses. Huh. We refused to sell. We said we will only give it out as rent because it needs that kind of a maintenance and it's uh, innovation. We do not want to, uh, you know, sell outright. So they said, "No, we will make it on our own." The problem that happened: they got some of the best sculptors, they got some of the best mechanics, engineers, this, that. One year down the line, they couldn't make that, mm -hmm. and they spent lakhs of rupees. And they called us back on our terms for their next film. Mm. No. Even they did some patch shoots for that same film that is Samshera. Samshera. We pitched the horses for Samshera. Now, why did not that happen? Because we, I, as an animator, had done horse run cycles, uh, frame by frame drawing the horse. Right. So we knew the movement of it. On that, we are applying our, uh, you know, sculptural understanding of forms, shapes, the look of it, the texture of it, the finish of it, and then we are not just mechanizing it; we are putting life into it, which is animation actually. Right. We are not mechanizing a horse. What they want, what they tried to do, they tried to make a mechanical horse. And what we were doing is we were trying to put life into a mechanical horse. Right. Right. So we were not mechanizing it. So then, so many dots got connected. 
the first design drawings of machines that we did i did it like how we how i draw my human figures and things like that it's not because i i had not done that kind of a technical drawing for a machine design mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i was drawing just like i would draw any human form and figure and but i could get the perspective correct and show okay this will go here this will interact so everybody will get a sense of what we are trying to do correct and then when i take it to other people who are doing it actually they put in their bit of knowledge of actually working with machines and metals and things like that and they solve problems at its each stage so it was a very crude way of designing a machine but the idea of it as of today mostly thing design is happening that way it's not like getting one final it's rapid prototyping right. like what elon musk is also doing earlier they wouldn't send one spacecraft before it is all finely tuned he is sending one after the other he is failing but that is cheaper for him yeah rapid that is rapid prototyping you can get it to that level and try it out if it fails we know we correct rather than making all this effort to, so this is now how the design has become more organic right and how you are taking different multi uh, different kinds of skill sets into account somebody from a crafts background who is only turning he also puts his in input so you have to be able to create a platform where everybody can contribute take all these skills but what was missing in yashraj's uh, horse project was the designer they got yeah. the engineer they got yeah. the sculptor they got all the materials but the designer to make the connections was not there right so we just enable in that i did not sculpt the horse i did not do one single welding right ha huh? i did not put one single bearing it's but we design and then when we are set, the, giving it on rent so then mm-hmm. the cycle completes i had identified a program and now all stars like i'll tell you one story where there's a film coming up which was jayesh jayesh bhai jorda ranveer singh does not get on to a live horse because he had we will a, all had, be watching for that one so <laughs> no, what what happened because he had a near fatal accident on the sets of bajida okay after that he doesn't get anywhere close to a live horse so in jayesh bhai jorda there was a shot in which he had to get on a shaadi ka horse barat ka horse and the horse was not also moving yeah yeah he straight away asked for our horse because and that shot was done in one take yeah same with another thing in chiranjeevi's case who has a stable with six seven horses he asked us to make a horse for him just copying his horse what happens is when he comes on the set he pats on his horse his horse has to be on the set he will pat on his horse and sit on our horse because <laughs> this is a one take shot everything Wonderful. is programmed everything is yeah. done yeah so much more in control yeah so that is the design you identify your problem you apply all this and you create an enabling platform where everybody can contribute but you have to stitch it together to give it that form and then take it to that market to the right place yeah perfect great thank you very much kripa you can uh, switch back on and be able to just update everyone just what i wanted to let everyone know is thank you first very much korean prasoon for sharing your industry insights and i think the the little uh, the anecdotes has helped us be able to connect a little bit more we know what we're going to be watching for now when we're watching these movies um absolutely professor mishra as well thank you very much uh for everyone who's been watching there are still some some seats open at vijabhumi please do go ahead and apply and uh, have a look at that and remember in the words of philip stark who is a designer design is not about looking at the world like this but looking at the world like this so building awareness and being able to open up your mind to what you can connect to is going to be most important kripa i think you have some important information to share about the mindlo program with students and and just go ahead and do that then. yes uh, thank you ma'am uh, thank you professor mishra thank you uh, gauri and prasoon it really was an insightful session uh thank you all to all the attendees for your enthusiastic participation uh, we are sure that you were able to get a better sense of clarity about the career options in designing and its future implications uh we've already shared a link about the vijay bhumi school of design if you'd like to know more about the program you can always uh, refer to that 
Uh, if you're still not sure, however, uh, if design is the right choice for you, or if you need assistance in choosing the best fit program or college, please reach out to us at hello at mindlow.com. Uh, Mindlow has helped more than 120,000 students and uh, partnered with more than 150 schools across India to achieve the same. Our psychometric assessment has an accuracy of 97% in terms of helping students identify their ideal career. Uh, you can learn more about our services and the programs that we offer on our website, which is uh, www.mindlow.com. I'm just going to put it in the chat quickly as well. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for a wonderful evening. Uh, please take care and stay safe. If we have been actually unable to answer any of the questions, please do reach out to us at hello at mindler.com and we'd be very happy to answer that. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank, you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shilpa, ma'am. It was wonderful. Yeah? Thank you so thank much. You. All the best. Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Gauri. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you so everyone. much. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Take care.